Welcome back to another episode of Door Kickers 2 Task Force North, where we've been using realistic military tactics and CQB doctrine to play this game, Door Kickers 2 Task Force North. If you like what you're seeing in this game and you don't yet own it, but you want to, you can purchase a copy of it off of my game store at nexus.gg slash controlled pairs gaming. I'd also like to take this opportunity to invite you guys to subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet and to visit us over on the website at controlledpairs.gg. Over there, you'll find information on upcoming events as well as our blog where we've been posting some videos from our other hidden YouTube channel including some time at the range talking through the way that simulations and virtual reality is going to impact how law enforcement and military trains in the coming years and all things tactical shooters and combat sims. Today we're taking a look at a Steam Workshop custom map called Arresting the Rat. Let me go ahead and click over here and read the description. This custom mission has been made by Magma Cahody. Thank you and to all the other map makers out there who make these custom maps on Steam Workshop. Thanks for doing what you do. We appreciate you guys. The intel packet for this thing says we are looking for a local criminal called The Rat. He is the guy who can get you anything in this part of town, which means he is acquainted with the criminal underground. He is located in his apartment at the top floor and we were able to get access to one of his webcams so you can have direct vision into his panic room. Arrest him and take him to the safe house for interrogation. So this is an abduction operation. I've been giving two assaulters to accomplish it. I've selected to bring Old Faithful Drummer as well as Philly. The panic room that was referenced in the intel packet seems to be located here. I can see my HVI is standing right there. It looks like he's got a bodyguard in the room with him. He's got an RPK-74. The fact that they're already in the panic room indicates to me that we are compromised. That means the enemy knows that we're here and that's gonna have to play a role in how we clear this space. We're going to talk a little bit about selective clearance versus deliberate clearance and a little bit about dynamic entry versus threshold fighting or limited penetration. I know that this is all just mumbo jumbo verbiage, but I think this is an interesting teaching point. So if we're already compromised, there's kind of two schools of thought on how you enter a room uh, and they're both correct. But if we're already compromised, that means we know that there's already enemy, you know, in this space potentially probably waiting for us to come through this door, which means pointing guns at that door. We could do what you see in the movies and uh, what, you know, looks really cool. We could, you know, put an explosive charge on this door, throw a flashbang in and just come running through real quick. One takes two, two takes one that whole thing and just flow in and get in a giant gunfight. The problem is the enemy already knows we're here and they're probably already taking cover back behind barricades like this and probably already pointing guns at this door. So running through what we would call the fatal funnel. Uh, the fatal funnel is in this case a choke point where we expect the enemy's fires and effects to be funneled into. Um, running through this fatal funnel while the enemy is prepared to engage it would result in us dying. So instead what we're going to do is try to set the conditions to enter this room safe. First thing we're going to do to set the conditions is put this camera under this door. While we do that, we're going to pull security on the door for our buddy because we don't want anyone ever standing in front of a door without good security. Sure enough, I see one bad guy here. I see an additional bad guy here. I see a civilian right here, which now makes me, you know, understand that my rules of engagement are a little bit more strict. I can't go throwing frag grenades directly into the space. I don't want to result in any uh, unnecessary civilian casualties. I did bring some door charges, so I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll put a explosive breach on this door. While our breacher is working on the door, we're going to pull security over his head for him so that if that door swings open, we've got our buddies back. Now that that door charge is set on the door, we're going to go into a split stack. And now remember, we were talking about setting conditions before entering. So if I know that there is a bad guy somewhere right here, I'm going to offset 45 degrees, try to kill him as soon as this door comes open. I don't want to peek around this corner because this guy looks like he had some cover and he's also standing right next to a civilian. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to throw a flashbang into this room right about there and have that flashbang go off on A. So now when I hit A, this charge goes off, this flashbang goes off. I'm not going running into this room until I'm satisfied that it is reasonably safe to do so and it's the logical next course of action. I'm going to keep an eye on what's going on over here as well. So three, two, one, breach. <laughs> We've already engaged and destroyed this guy. Our bang's going out right Get now. Here. Bang goes out. We will go ahead and step center with both assaulters now. Maintain cross coverage. Now that we have set conditions by killing this guy, by shocking them with this explosive breach, by prepping this deep space with a banger, now I believe it is okay to enter and clear this room. Not before. Uh, but with that said, we will go ahead and clear here. That's my number one man. Number two man will clear here. 
Number one man's going to maintain. He's already done his center check. Then he's going to collapse to his point of domination, break down his sector, maintain security on this door. That's my next threat. I've also got a deep threat further up that way. He can kind of keep a chunk on both of them. Uh, other guy's also going to do a center check or complete his center check. He'll clear his point of domination. After he clears his point of domination, he'll break down his sector. And here we go, folks. Civilian seems to be moving. Civilian is squirting out. That actually helps us quite a bit. All right. Um, I mentioned earlier selective clearance versus deliberate clearance. And in military operations and urban terrain and CQB, which is close quarters battle or CQC, close quarters combat, you'll hear people say things like selective clearance versus deliberate clearance from time to time. When I say selective clearance, what that means is identifying where my objective is and then doing everything I can to get to that objective and accomplish it as fast as possible. So it would mean doing things like bypassing this room, bypassing this room, bypassing this room, and instead maneuvering rapidly direct to my objective area. Why would you want to do that? Well, perhaps there's a hostage rescue and we're worried about the hostage's safety. In that case, the safety of the assaulter who's making that mad dash in this selective clearance to the target is less important than the well-being of that hostage. And that's why we would choose to do selective clearance and leave our flank exposed to some of these other threats. Uh, in deliberate clearance, we would knock all of these other potential threats out first. Because there's no hostages that I know of, there are some civilians, but there's no hostages that I know of, uh, we are going to use deliberate clearance to try and set conditions, just like we did before we entered this first room, and make it safe to take the next step into this apartment. So the next room I need to clear, I think is here. You know, I could make an argument for this one. I think I'm going to go for this guy first, just based off of how all this cover and stuff is laid out. All right, the camera's right here, so I'm going to creep up and I'll stick a camera under there. Oh, I got an open breach here. But, ooh, he's got a gun pointed at the door. So if he's got a gun pointed at the door, I don't want any of that. I'm going to back off because he could fire through that door. Where's my charges at? There we go. All right, so... <laughs> Uh, something to discuss here. So this is an open breach, right? The open breach typically would be my greatest threat. Usually it would. Um, in this case, I, I don't think that it is because I just spotted this guy who's armed with a, a gun pointed at my back through this door. He's also got some frags and, and magazines and stuff in there. So um, I'm calling this my greater threat. I'm going to solve that problem first. We're going to do that by one, detonating this breach. Now that that breach is detonating, I'm seeing some effects right there. So it looks like I have wounded that guy. Uh, we're going to slip into cross coverage right here. Still no eyes on the target, so we're going to flip. All right, so cross coverage until we can no longer cover one another safely without having to shoot through your buddy to get to the target. So as soon as that moment occurs... You use a nonverbal signal, you can drop your gun, you can nod, you can do whatever. You can use a laser, but nonverbal cue signals the switch. That switch allows the assaulters then to flip-flop and clear the rest of the space. So with that accomplished, the rest of the space is clear and secure. Next threat is going to be this open room, so we'll kind of choke this stack up. Lead man's going to maintain open threshold. Other guy's going to maintain these other two doors. Okay, I've got one bad guy in here that appears to be unarmed. That's really complicated, guys. So uh, in a situation like this, you know, it always takes at least two to secure a bad guy. You want to get perpendicular. You want one man, you know, pointing a gun at his head from the side. And you'd put someone else behind him working to get him cuffed and zip tied and searched and moved to the rear. We typically have some sort of element outside the compound or outside the apartment to receive him uh, and help process him. In door kickers, that doesn't work as well as one might hope. So what I'll do is I'll bring this guy in here. I'm going to keep a gun pointed at his face. Stick a camera under this door. All right, this bathroom is clear and secure. I'm going to leave him here from now. Simulate that perhaps, you know, we've got an adjacent element able to secure him. Uh, and we will scoop him up on our way out. So we'll restack for now. Next, I think I'm going to worry about this room up here. So what we'll do...
is this number. Okay, one additional bad guy in here. He also does not appear to be armed. That's kind of interesting. Um, so I'm going to leave him be for now, I think. Um, ah, I mean, I know he's there, but damn. Yeah, I'm going to leave him there for now. And then uh, we're going to end up coming back to, to get the rest of these guys hooked up. All right, now let's get a camera under this next door. We're, you know, remember we're doing a deliberate clearance, so we'll swing around here, get a camera under there, give him a buddy to maintain security for him. I got a shooter here, shooter here, civilian here, shooter here. Okay, this one's going to be spicy. We're definitely going to use this last charge. All right, charge is set. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to split the stack deep. So if I put this guy all the way back into this room, keeping in mind he does have a bad guy right there. If I keep him all the way back into this room... I've got good standoff, good cover, and I might even be able to, oh yeah, okay, perfect. All right, breach is open, bang is going in. We're doing more threshold fighting here because I don't want to commit through it, right? We know that it's a really shitty situation. I only have two guys. I want to give myself the best odds I can. Okay. Civilian coming out. I think we'll go ahead and put another bang into this room if we can. Like right there. I'm occupying that gap so that while he's throwing the bang, he doesn't get hit. And I'm going to put one more bang right here as well. I think we're clear and secure in this room. We've got an open door, or at least an unlocked door to our rear. I'm rapidly going to transition and get a camera under that guy. One more shooter there. Oh, another shooter there. Okay, I think our best chance here is going to be clearing from external. So what I'll do, since this dude isn't looking at me, I can use this trickery. Alpha, go. We know there's no civilians out there because we've been able to clear it with the camera. I can employ a frag. <laughs> Certainly a hell of a lot safer than the alternative, right? We have an open breach here. Doing a good job fighting from the threshold. There's no cover here, unfortunately. Even though it kind of looks like there should be. And our HVI is right there, so I don't want to go throwing frags in. I will go ahead and boot that door.
and I just continue to work this angle to our advantage. We know he's there. All right, there he is. I wish we had more handhelds. We don't. Nothing about this is okay. Barricaded shooter with no solution. Guys, I'd be looking to like call him out or do any number of things here um, to try and get a reaction. Alright, we're going to high-low the corner. Sure enough, he's dead. We do have dead space over here, though. One man on the HVI, one man on the dead space. That's why we had dead space coverage. Arrest that HVI. Alright, we're going to get him out of here now. Remember, we did have those other two... That's we'll go ahead and get this guy arrested. Give good buddy coverage while we do it. Hands behind your back. Suspects, come with me. Alpha, go. There he goes. All right, all three uh, surrenders. One HVI is arrested. Two other in custody. Two minutes, thirty-nine seconds. Fourteen enemy killed. No friendly kill. Let's go ahead and watch that replay.